The Agenda with Michael Knight on News Radio 560 KPQ and KPQ.com. Ten minutes past one o'clock, the show begins. Let's meet our very special guest, Lee Duncan. Lee Duncan is a candidate for the Chelan County Commissioner's seat, and welcome to the show, Lee. Nice to have you in the studio. Thank you, Michael. I've been meeting a lot of candidates, and I always ask them what got into them one day when they decided, that's it, I'm in the race, I'm doing this, I'm not turning back. I thought about it, now I'm really going to do it. How did that happen for you? Yeah, yeah I, I'll try to give you the short answer on that. I, I think it, it's just one of those things where I worked for Chelan County for almost a decade. What and did you do? I uh, actually moved my family here over a dozen years ago to work for Chelan County in the Natural Resource Department. So my my duty there was uh, to <clears throat> bring all the stakeholders in the water different watersheds. So the county's divided up into four major watersheds. So my job was to to coordinate and facilitate watershed planning units. And so we would bring all the diverse stakeholders. Uh, usually centered around water management and uh, water efficiencies. And so we had groups, uh, you know, the, the individual orchardists, irrigation districts, uh, every conceivable state and federal agency you could think of, salmon recovery folks, environmental groups, and just individuals. We would bring them together, and we always were able to come to consensus on how to best manage our, our uh, natural resources, primarily our water resources uh, in the area. Well, you're lucky you have a lot of water. <laughs> yeah, uh, and we have a lot of water needs and demands. Right. And you, you could imagine with the group that I, the stakeholder list that I, I just mentioned, uh, there's a lot of different and competing interests. And we were always able to con come to consensus on how to improve uh, our water resources here and how to manage them into the future. And I I would offer that that, that skill set I would take to the uh County Commission, and uh, they are highly lacking some of those skills, I would say, right now. Some other people have run for the, the run for some of the seats available in the County Commission, and they talked mm -hmm. about the inability to negotiate or compromise. Correct. Can you give me an example of how the Commission has failed us in terms of meeting somebody halfway or negotiating their way to a better deal or compromising when the way forward seems uncertain? Well, I think what they've done to the local cannabis industry is the perfect example of that. You know, we, we were invited almost in a way here. Uh, I was already here, but we were considered agriculture initially, and uh, many of us were given letters of approval for our applications. I actually have my letter of approval right here. Uh, and did, we were, did they honor that letter in the end? Well, no, because 44 small farms are on the chopping block. Most will be out of business within the next year and likely three to five farms will survive. It could be a complicated uh, issue, but tell me how it went so wrong. You know, what the county has done, and I would say this is sort of what they do, they divided the community. And I think you see it at the national level. Uh, we have it very much so at the, at the local level. They have an approach of, of dividing the community and it becomes easier for them to make the knee-jerk decisions and justify those knee-jerk decisions. So for roughly 18 months, there was a rev resolution that we would be considered ag. And most of us started our uh, investments on our farms uh, based on that. And, you know, a year and a half, two years into it, after we had invested probably close to $20 million into the county, uh, that was all taken away. It, we were given two years to recoup our costs and then more or less shut down they ended up having some regulations that more or less put the vast majority of the, the small farms out of business based on zoning. And zoning alone, we, I am an indoor farmer, so I, the, the problem, uh, what issues were with mainly smell. And, you know, the indoor farms were lumped in there with them. So there goes that inability to even look outside the box or even listen to the people. They went against their own planning commission uh, recommendations. They had a working group for a year and a half. We tried to work with the county. We gave them every possible option to, to move forward. We, we offered solutions for the few actual issues there were. And in the end, they just, you know, let 600 jobs go. At the height, we, we employed 600, up to 600 full-time positions. 
we had Alcoa leave right when we were ramping up. So 500 jobs were gone there. We actually proposed to the county, we can absorb some of those jobs. And I actually hired temporarily somebody part-time from Alcoa, and it allowed him to continue to get some some employment while he looked for others. But w- what did the county do, you know, for, for the workers of Alcoa? You know, we offered help there, and, and other farms did seek out uh, people from Alcoa. Am I right in thinking that many of the people who are in the marijuana industry as growers came from the ag industry? They were, I mean, if they're farmers, you know, how, did is, they, how did they not be ag? Exactly. It is the most diverse group I've personally had to deal with. We have everything from a lot of orchardists that simply looked at it as a diversica- diversification of their crop. Right. So many, many orchardists were able to uh, just seg out one acre, and that... It, made them or grossed more money on that one acre than they may have on the other 50 acres of pears or apples, you know. And those were the farmers that were have been hit the worst because they were primarily the outdoor farmers uh, the, the in greenhouse. And now with the setbacks of, I think, 1,500 feet from your property line, it, it basically – it it uh, it zoned everybody out. There's only a few uh, uh, zones that it's uh, able to be in. We have a lot of orchardists, particularly in District Two, that are in RR5 zoning, and it's it's not allowed at all there. You know, it's not allowed in most of the zoning. What about the rest of the counties in the state? Are they growing marijuana without these difficulties? Uh, they seem to be. Uh, Chelan County is the only county in the state that. Th- let's face it. There's there's issues with any new industry, but Chelan is the only one that did not grandfather their growers in. There are other counties that, you know, uh, farmers came in, established the infrastructure, are growing, and then the issues came up. And they put in new regulations. They would grandfather the existing farms in, and they would have to meet whatever new regulations there are, uh, rather other than, you know, where they are or the, the zoning, if, if they're not allowed in that zoning anymore. Chelan County is the only county that said, no, everybody's done. So the 10 and $20 million we invested in this community was for not. We were given two years, and that's an arbitrary time. Some people, yeah, maybe it took only two years to recoup their costs, but some of these big farms that spent millions of dollars, two years is nothing, you know, to recoup their costs. And to not grandfather us in is just ridiculous. There's a lawsuit, isn't there, based on the actions of the commission? Correct. There are actually a number of lawsuits, and there will be more lawsuits to come as farms uh, are shut down. Um, I know there's uh, one farm that has a $20 million lawsuit alone. Uh, the association, uh, the uh, Central Washington Growers Association, which I helped form, uh, in order to fight the county, uh, because with their initial ban, we were only given uh, 60 days to appeal that through the Growth, Managing, uh, growth Management uh, Hearings Board. And so the, the county has forced our hand. You know, we needed to save our livelihood. So we didn't have a choice but to file a lawsuit. And I think that lawsuit suit is around $20 million as well. I know that there will be other lawsuits as farms are shut down, individual lawsuits. If the Cheyenne County Commissioners hadn't acted as they have, would this be a successful industry? Would it be a money-making industry? Would it be a good place for a farmer to diversify? Yes. Now, like any industry, the farmer is on the low end of the total. Farmer takes all the chances. Correct, (laughs) correct. All the money, all the taxation is on the retail, which, by the way, the county allowed. You know, and so uh, so imagine imp- having to import cherries into Schlang County because you can't grow cherries, you know. And so um, in the last four years, the cannabis industry in Chelan has generated roughly $50 million. The vast majority of that stays in the county. I'm one of the smaller farmers, but I generate about a quarter million dollars a year. And all this is public knowledge. You can go to 502data.com. And the vast majority of my expenses every month uh, stay in Chelan County. There are very few things that I have to go outside the county for. We we provide uh, employment. We pay li- have living wages. All my employees live here in the county. Uh, I go to Oxark. I pay, you know, power bills. We need local services like accounting. 
we are huge for this county. How many farmers are in the situation you're in right now? There are roughly uh, 44 farms, and there are only about four to five that meet the zoning requirements. And there's only one farm that meets all the requirements. So one farm out of 44 farms meets the zoning and setback requirements. I, I, I question that. You know, how, how did even that one farm make it? You know, how did almost, we get off on the wrong foot when all the other states that had previously legalized marijuana were there as examples of how to do it or not do it? Th- that's a very good question, and I think it's it's one of those things where there are there's an extreme minority in this county that has the ear of the commissioners, and that's how they govern. Uh, if I, I would love to read the, the short letter that I got from them, read just a section, please. Okay, sure. Um, as a, so, so initially the county put a a moratorium on on cannabis. Mm -hmm. What do we have moratoriums for? To take time to think about how they want to address or regulate it. They did that, and they lifted their ban. Because they had a moratorium, I had to get permission from them to move forward with the state. They gave me permission and actually state that uh, by lifting our moratorium on state-approved marijuana activities, we... uh, we will continue to respond as to the appropriateness of siting as it relates to our zoning code, but will rely on the state to enforce any buffers or other conditions. Uh, Not sure what that means. There's trouble to come is what it means, right? Well, what it what it meant or what it means is that the the state already had a system to regulate us, and it was set up. The county basically said. That's your job to regulate them. And at the time, we were considered agriculture. So based on that, we all, I sold my home. I I dumped everything I had. And I was a county employee well into me getting my license and starting my business. You know, it was, everything seemed okay. Now, we were told that, you know, the, the smell, more or less the smell. Well, when we're considered ag, well, Agriculture can have smells. How about limes? Have you ever been around a vineyard during a harvest season? Correct, yes. So there's a lot of odors. And then all of a sudden, we're not ag. Why is that? I, you know, I don't know other than the fact that there are uh, a very extreme minority that... Did that the county commissioners it. reclassify you as non-ag? Correct. We are non-ag. So what are you? I'm not sure because I put a seed in soil and it grows. I put water and give it sunlight, artificial, uh, and and I have what I call a crop. I mean, that's what I call it, a crop. So I don't know what else to call us other than ag. The only reason they were able to do that is that the State Department of Revenue, for taxation purposes, does not consider cannabis ag. Every other state ag, uh, agency does consider us ag, including L and I. We got all our permits, be it whether it was for the county or from the state. We got all our appropriate permits. So when L and I, when we had to get electrical work, L and I considered us agriculture and still does, and and uh, bases our fees and permits based on what agriculture industry ha- has to do. Sounds like you got backed into the corner first and then decided to run for the commission. Am I, am I getting that pretty accurate? You know, you know, I, I don't want to say that I am the cannabis candidate. I feel like I am the experienced candidate. I, I've i actually thought about it for a number of years. Buell Hawkins and, and Ron Walter actually used to call me uh, Commissioner Duncan. It's an inside joke uh, uh, from years ago, but... Uh, I've actually thought about it for a number of years. Uh, I have not only worked for Chelan County, but I've worked for its employees. I represented its employees during union negotiations for salary increases, which, by the way, every single time ended up in mediation because the Chelan County commissioners refused to sit down at the table and listen to their own employees. So we always got drug into mediation. That costs money. It costs the taxpayers money. It costs me time. And so, again, it's it's that mentality. It's nothing to do with the, the cannabis industry per se. I don't even have this fantasy that I can save the local industry. But I feel I can improve the county for, you know, years to come because we we have the county has quit working for us. 
and they literally just regulate us. And I want the county to start engaging again. There are so many issues that we need to talk about. Affordable housing is one. Certainly is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I have five children here. I want them to be able to own a home here. Right now, they cannot. I can't even afford a home here. I rent. And there, there are a number of things. And, and having this complacency in, in a 1970s, 80s mentality, using land use planning and zoning to, to address modern issues like cyber currency mining and nightly rentals, again, these are issues that they need to address. And right now, they, they just seem to sit on their hands and increase their authority to, to regulate us. So rather than leading us, the commission, in your view, is uh, holding down certain aspects of society that are ready to grow, ready to be progressive, in, Correct. not in the political sense, but in the futuristic sense. And the commission, you think, is a, not of a mind to, uh, to shine light on those efforts. Correct. I, I think you are. I think we are seeing a changing of the old guard. Uh, you know, Ron was there, I think, for 16 years. I think Keith has been there for about 16 years. Uh, Doug has, I think he's going on 12 years or so. Uh, my guess, he probably will not run again. And, and I think that it's a good thing. We need fresh people in there. I think Commissioner Overbay has been hampered by a, a large learning curve where I don't have that. I've already been at the county. I actually know a lot of the dirty laundry. I know we need to get the right people in the right position and empower those people. What we have right now over the last dozen years, having, what, seven, eight directors in them, directors for community development, how do we, and right now, I mean, the current director, there was no interview process. He was just placed in there. He used to be the, the public works director. To me, that, that's just them sitting on their hands, being complacent, re, regurgitating old employees because they got to fill a position. Let's start planning for the future. Let's start engaging with the, the local community. I was speaking to a small business group yesterday, and, you know, I asked them, does the city or the county engage with you guys? No, not at all. Well, how do we plan? How do we have a community development department when we don't engage with the community? So how do we develop future plans when there, there's no involvement, there's just regulation. What's going to be the future of the marijuana industry? And is that, is, is that uh, a factor that we should all be concerned about now that we're halfway into this thing and it looks like it's ch we're changing directions? Well, the, the, the cannabis industry is not going away. It is full of innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, there is so much that the cannabis industry has to offer uh, tons of communities, not just Chelan County. And by the way, if there's one place on the planet where cannabis should be grown, it's in Chelan County. We have the cheapest power rate in the nation, and we, we boast 300 days of sun. We have to be aware of our, of our environmental footprint when we're producing anything and everything. So... Locally, I think the, the, there's been a huge setback with the local cannabis industry. But overall, the cannabis industry will continue to thrive and move forward. Chelan County is living in the past, and I hope to bring it into the future. And that is in regards to not only cannabis, but everything else that we have in this modern world. And the way the cannabis is taxed, which is really quite extraordinary, 37.5%. Yeah. Right. Does the money go where it's supposed to go? Does it come back to the county in any form that I can that I can be have been able to track? Yes, and that's why the county kept the retail spots. There's a couple of retail locations within the county. If they were to ban those as well, they would have not received the little bit of money that they do receive from the the state coffers. Uh, I actually, why does the state so stingy with the money that comes back? That's a good question. That's a good question. I feel that the counties. Uh, particularly Chelan, Chelan County, they need to engage more with the state. Um, I know Represent, Representative Condotta has worked to try to change that. I think it was one of the things I actually initially uh, voted against the 502 initiative because I read all the dirty details, and that was one of the things that was left out, that the local municipalities were sort of left out of it initially. That is changing. The state has realized a lot of things they did wrong with this, and they're trying to make amends. But to continue to ban us and, and you know, literally devastate lives and communities uh, is the wrong approach.
there's three aspects to the the marijuana industry. There's the retail sales that we see here in town. Correct. There's the re, there's the packaging people, and I don't understand. They've got they got a big job that I don't understand very well. Right. And then there's the farmer that grows it. Is that is right. that the way it goes? Uh, pretty much. Uh, I am a what they call a producer processor, so we can. All we do is grow flour, and so we don't do edibles or concentrates or anything. So we actually grow and package, and then we can sell direct. But some farmers are just producers, and then some people are just processors. So they will buy our crops and then either just package them themselves or turn them into a concentrate or an edible. If the commission, the current county commission, had not um, acted in the way that they had, would this be a healthy industry now here in the county? Oh, Yes. Oh, completely. I actually have wanted to hire uh, for about a year, year and a half now, and none of us can expand. None of us can hire right now because, well, for one, most of us are being shut down, but uh, we would have continued to grow. I mean, we would probably be in the more of the $75 million range if for the last two years we wouldn't have had to spend all our money on attorneys. And by the way, the, the association has spent over $160,000 on attorney fees, uh, having to having to fend off the county. So imagine how much the county has spent of our taxpayer dollars closing local farmers. How much? I don't know, but I'm guessing it, even if even if they're more efficient than we are, you know, it, it could be. Tens of thousands of dollars. I would say one dollar in shutting down local businesses is one dollar too much. And when they go to court, who's going to win? I like to say uh, we will. But who knows? When we get to court, there are no winners. I know. Lest someone think that you're a one-issue man, and of course you've talked about the, the, the nature of the commission and the nature of the future of the county, so I didn't take it in that, in that regard. But what else is, is the number two on your list once you, once you get the commission right? You know what? I, I've talked about some of the issues, affordable housing. The county can't even begin to address those kinds of issues until they fix the infrastructure at the county. And it goes back to what I said, getting the right people in the right position and empowering those people. We have little fiefdoms within the county that are more concerned about, you know, hammering us as citizens with regulations that rather than working with us. The point of the Chelan County Code is to ensure public health, human health and safety and to protect and conserve our, our natural resources. All they do is code in enforcement. All they do, there is no way to, the local county Code enforcement cannot write a citation. They don't have the authority to fix anything out in the field. Everything has to be run through the legal department. Again, that just bogs the system down. It becomes a, a bureaucratic nightmare. It's so I would start by fixing some of the infrastructure there. You know, uh, reevaluating how the county code is is uh, applied. And then, you know, once we get the right people in the right positions, then we can start to engage again. And right now, the city of Leavenworth and the, the city of Chelan, they are taking the affordable housing issue very seriously. They have their own task force. Do you think Chelan County is involved with that? No. I talked to a city councilman last week with Leavenworth, and no, the county's not engaged. The county needs to be the main driver and facilitator of that discussion all the, the, the other cities here are surrounded by Chelan County. We, the county needs to be the, the main driver of, of that issue and a lot of other issues. I think the, uh, the nightly rental issue is going to come on board, too. Airbnb. That's, Airbnb. That's and, a controversy and, everywhere. Right. All right. over and the planet. And, again, I'm afraid that this current commission will take the approach they took with the cannabis industry and divide that industry with the people that are against it. And for it. And there's no in-between, and there's a lot of in-between. That's the voice of Lee Duncan. He's the candidate for the Chelan County Commissioner. Lee, please ask the voters of the county for your, for their vote, and, that'll, and then we have to wrap it up. Yes, yes. I, I uh, Please take a look. Uh, I am What Chelan County Needs. Uh, so you can go to whatchelanneeds.com. You can also contact me at whatchelanneeds at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from people. Uh, I've spoken to a lot of uh, groups, and if there's a group that you have that you would like to, to, uh, for me to attend,